mild to moderate depression. So this is the second part of um, the series uh, on depression. So hopefully you've watched the first part and uh, now we're just continuing on. So mild to moderate depression. Ongoing feelings of depression can range from mild to moderate. You may feel better after receiving good news or spending time with friends. However, the elevated mood doesn't last long and depression creeps back in. The very nature of depression involves feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. This makes it really difficult to take steps needed to heal. The key is to start small and build from there. If you develop your own recovery plan and stick to it by making healthy, supporting choices every day, you'll feel better. Again, the help of a mental health professional and or antidepressant prescription medications can help you manage or relieve depression. Now, some people have messaged me and they said, you know, do you recommend antidepression, uh, antidepressants? Do you not? That is a choice for you and your team of doctors. Now, also, it should be noted, you know, unlike HIV medications, you can start um, a, a, something for depression and after six months, evaluate it with your doctor and you could possibly come off of that medication. Um, so, you know, that's a conversation that you need to have with your doctor. Um, certainly, you should always keep it open as an option to get you through that um, tough spot. Now, severe depression. What is severe depression? Severe depression interferes with your ability to complete activities of daily living, uh, including health routines that support your HIV health. Severe depression is affected, effectively treated with the assistance of a qualified mental health professional and often involves both talk therapy and antidepressant medication. You may be saying, well, you know, if you're a member of the LGBT community, well, I, I don't really want to go to a mental, you know, a, a, a shrink. I don't want to do this. Well, you, let me tell you what. There is a wide variety of mental health professionals out there who their primary client base is LGBT. They know the issues surrounding the community. And it's not like five or ten years ago um, where, you know, you can't go in there and let them know you're gay. or It's not like that anymore. So certainly I would encourage you to seek out a mental health professional that identifies as serving uh, the LGBT community. Um, so let's talk about immunity. What part does depression play with immunity? Temporary occasional depression lasting up to six months is normal and unlikely to affect the immune system. Intense or sustained depression, so this is anything lasting longer than six months, can negatively impact your health. A number of research articles show depression appears to have a significant impact on your immune system including a reduction in natural um, killer cell activity, so that's NK. Depression compound with grief uh, can have an even more significant impact on immunity, decreasing both the natural killer cells and your CD4 count. Many psychologists and doctors recognize that depression is a disorder of the body as much as the mind and have an impact on heart disease, bone mass, physical pain, tightness in your joints, fatigue, sleep disorders, changes in appetites, changes in your hormone level, and uh, central nervous system, so things such as your immune functioning. One research study looked at the correlation between depression and HIV AIDS and ran tests to see if the number of natural killer cells increased as the level of de depression in the patients decreased. Through this, their studies of 57 HIV-positive women, they found that as levels of depression decreased, that the natural killer cell levels increased. So this echoes the, the value of um, recognizing symptoms of depression as early as possible and treating them with the help of a trained medical professional uh, and successful treatment of depression may well 
very well increase the number and the strength of your immune cells as well. So, you know, biting HIV, you have many, many tools in your arsenal. Yes, you know, if you're on uh, a triple up, you're on Complera, if you're on other nukes, non-nukes, protease inhibitors, if you're on these things, that's going to help your immune system. But we have to go the extra mile too. So, you know, recognizing and treating symptoms of depression um, is just as important to your immune health as taking your medicine daily, your antiretroviral therapy. So healthy, risky, health risking behavior. Enduring depression or multiple loss without support could make drugs or unprotected sex an attractive escape. A number of research studies show that increased feelings of depression correlate with the increased sexual risk taking. Feelings of hopelessness and helplessness can be accompanied by feelings of low self-worth or the belief that your actions will be ineffective at preventing risk, both of which can weaken your motivation to stay safe. Now, I can say, you know, I am clean from any drugs, but when I was using drugs, and I've used pretty much every drug out there, excuse me, um, you know, crystal meth was my issue. Now, let me throw this in here, and this isn't, this isn't on here, but if you're an individual and you make comments such as this, well, I only use drugs on the weekends, or I only use crystal meth whenever I party once a month, or I only, whatever, if you qualify that statement by I only, then I would challenge you that you're tempting fate. You're tempting something larger than yourself because addiction is a bear. And if you poke it long enough, it will bite back. It will. That, that's a certainty. That's a certainty. Um, so moving on to adherence. Adherence. All of you, I'm pretty sure, whenever you were diagnosed with HIV, the one conversation among many that you should have had with your healthcare provider was one of compliance and of adherence. You know, once you start on ARVs, you have to take them on your schedule. Um, the only person you're hurting if you don't is you. So adherence, you know, depression can lead to a why bother? Why bother attitude? Um, attitude around adhering to your health routines. The physical symptoms associated with depression, such as body pain, fatigue, uh, insomnia, can make it difficult or impossible to adhere uh, to a regular health routine, including basic body care, exercise, and nutrition. So, you know, you wake up in the morning, you just don't want to get out of bed, and you say, ah, oh, fuck it. Fuck it. You know, I've got HIV. What's going to happen? Right? That's a really fatalistic attitude to have. And although you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, all you're doing is compounding an issue that if you get out of bed and you take simple steps, and I'm not saying they're easy, but if you take these steps, uh, can get you on track to feeling better, okay? Um, that completes uh, the second video. I hope you stay tuned for the third video in this series in which I'm covering depression. Till my next video, do something positive.